Just how unprecedented is this result? It's, it's big. First of all, uh, Colombia has been governed by two main political parties for most of its democratic history, the liberals and conservatives. In fact, uh, really since its independence. Uh, what we see in these results, but we have been seeing for a while, is the collapse of that traditional party system. Um, so at, at the basic level of a party system, this is this is big. And then there's also just the ideological orientation of Gustavo Petro, um, who comes from the left. This is the first time Colombia, as you've mentioned in your package before, has a leftist president. Um, so that that's large. But also, as you also mentioned in the package, this really does represent a huge step forward in political inclusion. The liberal and conservative parties that I mentioned uh, were very homogenous, racially speaking. We're very closed. Um, and consequently, what we're seeing now is a huge opening in terms of people that are represented, the first Afro-Colombian uh, vice president, great expectations. And part of this comes as a result of the peace deal uh, that was signed by um, um, uh, Santos, President, former President Santos, uh, with the FARC, that allows for greater rural participation, allows for greater inclusion of the left and, and rural and peasant groups. Uh, and what does this mean for the region as a whole? Well, what we're seeing across the region is a dramatic anti-incumbent vote, both in, in Chile, quite likely in Brazil. Uh, we saw it, um, obviously, in Mexico before. Um, this is um, going to, I think, really fundamentally change uh, the, the alliances within the hemisphere. Uh, we already started to see it also a couple of weeks ago with the Summit of the Americas in Los Angeles, when a number of governments refused to uh, attend because Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela weren't attending, um, weren't invited. Um, so I think what we're going to see is a much more muscular foreign policy in the region, a much more, I wouldn't say anti-American, but a much more independent foreign policy in the region, and a foreign policy that looks less to um, sort of free trade agreements with the developed North and more towards, as Petro has promised, more towards social programs and more towards developing local industry, in particular small business, and less dependency on, on natural resource extraction in the case of oil, as your um, uh, previous report just noted. You just touched on a point which I wanted to raise. You mentioned the Summit of the Americas, and we have seen that the United States is trying to reassert its influence in the region. Uh, what happens now? Would you think the two sides, uh, the Colombia and the United States, could now grow further apart as also China tries to jostle for influence? Well, the U.S.'s formal uh, declaration has been that they're happy to see that uh, Colombians chose a president elect, uh, democratically, and that's important. I think the U.S. is going to be very careful not to overstep, not to be too aggressive. Again, the, the region's changing, and, and maintaining allies is going to require a lot more sensitivity to local politics, so there's that. But there are a number of issues that Petro is going to challenge the United States on. First of all, on the war on drugs. Petro is going to be much more opposed to uh, fumigation policies and anti-coca policies that the U.S. has really made the mainstay of its policies to, with uh, with Colombia. The second of all is with uh, with the uh, private sector. Petro is claiming he's going to increase taxes. He, he's even claiming he's going to protect more industries. And the U.S. has a free trade agreement with Colombia. And last is the issue with Venezuela. Colombia shares a border, a very large border, with Venezuela. There are two million Venezuelan refugees in Colombia, and Petro has said he's going to recognize the government of Maduro. Now, there are good diplomatic reasons to do that, but that goes very much against the policies of Petro's predecessor, Ivan Duque, and also against the U.S. policies of trying to isolate the Venezuelan government of Nicolas Maduro. Christopher Sabatini, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the program today. Thank you very much.